Valentine's Day. Oh, happy Valentine's Day, Lizette's family. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. And yeah, I think that's how. Why don't we start off the class by talking about Valentine's Day? Um, you can tell me if you have any plans, if you have a Valentine, or maybe you're just going to do something on your own. So tonight, I'm going to take my wife out to dinner. We're going to have a nice little evening, and it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. So let me ask, let me see, um, Elmer, what do you have planned for Valentine's Day? I think I don't have any plan, man. <laughs> <laughs> no plans? Hey, that's fine. I can respect that. Okay. <laughs> I need to think about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about what about Lizette? Do you and your family have any plans for Valentine's Day? Mm, actually, we don't just celebrate the Valentine's Day, but I think uh, I thinking all day is Valentine's Day for me. <laughs> so I always love it. My each it's my 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 family. So actually, just see you. Dinner at home, maybe not so special, something like that. Oh, not special, so yeah, that's okay. You know, Valentine's Day is not like it's not a very big so. Some people celebrate it, some people my kids got a lot of sweets from the yeah, they get a lot of <laughs> <laughs> that's right. What about you, Catherine? Do you have any plans for Valentine's Day? I do. I'm actually in the middle of the cooking and putting the table together for our dinner tonight. I was yesterday making a lot of Chilean's uh, pastry to have a little surprise to my husband. Oh, Kelly, you should take a picture of it and send it to us. It sounds very good. I wish, I will, I will. Uh, what about you, uh, Hayana? Do you have any plans for Valentine's Day? No, I don't have any plans tonight. No plans, no plans. Like, maybe you make some <laughs> real quick, right? I don't have any plans tonight. <laughs> That's okay. Sometimes it just gets relaxed on these days. What about uh, Stefania? Do you have any plans for Valentine's Day? Hi, how are you? Hey, good, Stefania. <laughs> um, no, um, I don't have uh, any plans for today. <laughs> no plans? Just like a normal day for you? Yes. Okay. Uh, watch a movie. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's good. What? Which movie? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I see um, Netflix, uh, a new movie or series. I don't know. Uh, is one day. One day is this called? Yes. Is is the name of the uh, one day yeah i don't know so I, I need to log on and see i have not used netflix in a long time there's it, one um there's one that's called it's like survival in the snow it's a very popular movie it was about like a, it's a spanish movie it was about a plane crash um and like the maybe in the winter time I, I need to watch my spanish friends told me i should watch it on netflix but i haven't <laughs> yeah have you seen that yes um, yeah okay cool it is from Chile. Yeah, from Chile. Chile. That's it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's very uh, stronger. This <laughs> movie, that movie is stronger and. Yeah. yeah. Do you like take this? And, and and you cry <laughs> when, oh, no. you, when you see because this is too much. Yeah. <laughs> for <laughs> for these people, for that people, and yeah. survive, survive in the middle of the uh nothing <laughs> in no, the snow good. yeah no it's society of the snow that's it yeah because I, I need to learn spanish too i'm trying to find <laughs> spanish media but it's a good movie <laughs> yeah, very good man i'm glad you like it stefania yeah let me see um kasumi do you have any plans for valentine's day oh yes uh, I will baking chocolate cake for my husband. Oh, that sounds very good. Do you like the chocolate <laughs> cake too? Yes. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay. What about you, Osiris? Do you have any plans for Valentine's Day? 
Today, um, dinner, my husband and my son, um, restaurant, Honduras. Well, that sounds pretty good. Anytime <laughs> mean, you go out to dinner, it's very tasty. So let's the uh, what about Maria Quintana? Do you have any plans for Valentine's Day? Um, hi everybody. Um, uh, we are gonna have dinner. We're gonna go to some fancy restaurant or something like that. Some fancy restaurant or something like that. <laughs> it sounds very exciting. <laughs> That's good. No, it, it, Valentine's, it's a fun holiday, but you know, sometimes it's good just to stay home and enjoy yourself. Let's ask one more person. Jay, do you have any plans for Valentine's Day? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to go to my family is in India. So even as such, I don't have any plan. Probably I will uh talk to them like for a like maybe for an hour and i already sent some gift so like uh, they will get it in one or two days because it got like a delay in the delivery so this is a simple plan like nothing exciting but phone call will be for a maybe for an hour today no it sounds good it's good to reconnect with people especially when they're far away yes well, that's I know it's good. I like to start the class with a little bit of conversation. So let's get into the lesson. Let me share my screen with everybody. We'll share this slideshow. And the first thing we're going to talk about is, you know, last week or last week, last Monday, we talked about calendar dates and things like that. So let's continue to talk about ways to express dates in English. So I want to make this as easy as possible. And so this lesson, they use something called cardinal numbers. Now, remember last Monday, we talked about ordinal numbers or counting numbers. So basically cardinal numbers are just a number that has a number and that's it. So I don't want you to get, don't, don't worry about the vocabulary. We really, you're not going to hear that word cardinal and ordinal very much in English. Just know that a cardinal number is a number by itself, 10. Ordinal number is one that like you count with. So 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. This is a cardinal number, 18. This is an ordinal number because it's counting. Cardinal is just a number by itself. Ordinal is counting. So in the United States, when we're talking about dates, we normally just say his meeting is on May 10. Now, the ordinal way to say this is May 10th, but we use both of these in English. So my birthday is on May 18th. Uh, May 18th is the ordinal of the counting version. The party is on May 31st or 31. And then May 31st is the ordinal version. It's just different ways to say these dates. And then, you know, in in the UK, they normally use these, these THs like we talked about. So 10th, 18th, 31st. So that's just different ways of saying the date. But you probably see both of these, um, you know, when you've really seen the dates in Birmingham. So let me, let me actually ask, ask uh, uh kasumi do you see dates that just say the number or do you see dates that have the th at the end of them normally i'm sorry <laughs> yeah like when you see a date in english is it just the number like the number 10 or does it have the th at the end of it like 10. uh 10 yeah and so like I said, you'll see them both just know that these are different ways to express the date i think i think this lesson made it a little confusing but we're just talking about different ways to say the date so in the uk they say things like the 10th of may instead of may 10th or you know may the 18th it's just different ways to spell this and say that um i i put this in the worksheet that i shared with you so you can have more examples of this 
but just know that these are just different ways to say the number in the day. So you can use the number 10, 18, 31. You can use 10th, 18th, 31st, or you can use the actual word. Here's the word 18th, 31st. It's just different ways of saying that. So we're going to listen to a little audio. There's a lot of audio files in the lesson today. So let's listen to this, and then we're gonna number these in the order that they're discussed. Hi, Mel. Hi, Addy. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Hey, I have a new phone, and I can't see my old calendar on it. Can I check some dates with you? Sure. Thanks. We've got a concert on the 22nd of March. I remember that. Okay, good. And it's Alice's party on April 5th. Have you got that in there? No, I haven't, so that's good to know. When's our theatre trip? It's not until November 17th. Oh, OK. That's in my diary now. And I plan to visit my parents on the 5th of June. That's in three months, Addie. You should really go see them sooner than that. Yeah, you're right. Then there's that music festival. When's that? It's August 31st. Good. Got it. What else is there? Ah, our trip to Toronto. That's on September 13th. Hmm, I think that's all. Unless you can think of anything else. What about Nanine's birthday? Do you know when that is? Is it the 19th of May? You remembered. <laughs> I'm such a good friend. <laughs> All right, yeah, so you had two friends talking about different dates there. So we were going to say um, the number that those were discussed. So the very first date they mentioned was March 22nd. What was the second date that was mentioned? All right, Jay, go ahead. Uh, April 5th. Yep, it was April 5th. Very good, very good. All right, and what about the third date that was mentioned? And anybody can say. November 17th. Yep, November 17th was the, ne the next one. Very good, very good. We got four more to go. So after that, what was the fourth one that was mentioned? All right, go ahead. June Christina. 5th. Yeah, June 5th. Very good, very good. Okay. All right, and what was the fifth date that was mentioned? August 31st. August 31st, that's right. We've got two more. What was the next one? September 13th. September 13th. All right. Jay, give somebody else a chance for this one. What was the last one that was mentioned? May 18th. 19th. 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 You got to step on it. Very good. Yes. Very good. Yeah. So I'm glad. So you got to hear how different voices are saying these dates. And you see, you don't have the TH at the end of these numbers, but they still pronounced it that way. So you'll hear that in English. So let's talk about some past tense now. So we're going to use was born for an example. So we use was born to talk about someone's date or year of birth. So if we said Jim was born in 1975, we're saying that was the year that he was born, right? Or Jim was born in 2015. Now remember, with dates, we don't say 2015, we would say 2015. So look at this, you say most dates by grouping the date into pairs of numbers, such as, you know, 19 and 75. But then for the 2000s, you can say, you know, you can say 2015 or 2015, 
But like I said, most people you talk to in Birmingham are going to say 2015. So let's look at some more examples. Of, so and this is a word that we use ago. So we're going to use this word to say how many years before now something happened. So if I said Plato was born around 2,500 years ago in 424 BCE, that means before now. So Plato was born around 2,500 years ago in 424 BCE. So that's a very long time ago. We use these terms to talk about things um, in the past, but we can I can share stuff on that later. Just remember the ago is what we're looking for there. So let's we're going to listen to another audio here. There's a lot of audios in this lesson, and I want you to listen to these audios, and then I want you to take a note of the year that each of these events happened. So we can play this twice if we need to, but let's see if we can get through it the first time. My name's Dahlia, and I was born in 1971 in Los Angeles. But my family moved to San Francisco when I was five years old. I started school in San Francisco. That was in 1976. Then I stayed in San Francisco until I went to college. I went to college in New York because it's such a cool city. I finished my degree in 1993. After that, I lived in different cities around the world for a few years. I got my first job in 1996. I worked for a bank in New York. I didn't like that job very much, but I met my husband at the bank. We got married in 2004. Now we live in New Jersey, and we're very happy. We had our first child, our daughter, in 2008. She's called Bethany, and she's very beautiful. All right, so this lady told us the different years um, that she had all these events. Do we need to listen to that one again, or do you think you can answer these? I do, again, please. Okay, well, we'll listen to this one more time. Remember, these pictures do go in order, so that makes it a little bit easier. My name's Dahlia, and I was born in 1971 in Los Angeles. But my family moved to San Francisco when I was five years old. I started school in San Francisco. That was in 1976. Then I stayed in San Francisco until I went to college. I went to college in New York because it's such a cool city. I finished my degree in 1993. After that, I lived in different cities around the world for a few years. I got my first job in 1996. I worked for a bank in New York. I didn't like that job very much, but I met my husband at the bank. We got married in 2004. Now we live in New Jersey, and we're very happy. We had our first child, our daughter, in 2008. She's called Bethany, and she's very beautiful. All right. So that I think the first picture, I think, is a little confusing. So this is when she was talking about starting school in San Francisco. So what year did she start school in San Francisco? 1976. Yeah, 1976. Very good. Very good. OK. All right. And uh, let's see. I'll, I'll, I'll do. So Lizette, what what year did she graduate college? She finished a graduate college, nineteen ninety three. Nineteen ninety three, very good. Yeah. Catherine, she had a bank job. What year did she work at the bank? Uh, nineteen ninety six. Nineteen ninety six, very good, very good. 
All right. And then who can tell me what year she got married? 2004. 2004. Very good, Stefania. And she had a child. What year was that? 2008. 2008. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so they're giving us a lot of audio lessons with this one, but I think it's a nice way to change things up a little bit. So this is kind of a chart of how to talk about what we've talked about. We're not going to create 12 sentences here. We're just going to say these out loud. So you, this is the structure you'll use. So my birthday is on December the 5th. Uh, Nami's meeting is on the 11th of March. I was born 20 years ago. He was born 41 years ago. That's kind of the structure of how you're going to say sentences like this. And then here's an example. My birthday is on December 5th. So very, very quick chapter. We talked about dates. We talked about using born, a was born, a go, some numbers, some month and years. And we talked about dates. And like I said, I put some of that in the worksheet for this time. So if you need some extra practice, um, you can work on that worksheet and send it to me and I'll help you with it. But let's go to the next chapter. We're talking about the past using past tense verbs here. And so let's start with the past simple of to be. So any action that happened and was completed in the past can be described in what we call the past simple. So the past simple of to be is was or were. So let's look at this. So this is the present simple. Jill is a woman now. And then the past simple is she was a student in 1985. So here is a nice little chart to look at this. So I was a student, you were a student, he, she, it, or a name was a student. So if I said Catherine was a student, uh, Stefania was a student, Hyena was a student, and then we, they, and you, we say were students. So here are some good uh, sentence examples. Let's read these out loud. So Jay, let's read this first sentence for me here. He was a doctor for 40 years. Yeah, he was a doctor for 40 years. All right, Elmer, read the next one for me. He asked one brother star in the 90. 1960s. Yep, 1960s. Very good. Very yeah, good. All right, Catherine, what's this next one? There was a party last night. There was a party last night. Okay. Uh, Maria Quintana, what about this one? We were at the library yesterday. We were at the library yesterday. Ayana, right. what's this one here? They were lots of people at the party, at the party. At the party, all right, and Lizette, let's see this last one here. They were at the movies last week. Okay, yeah, so we can see the different ways we use that past of to be. So here is one, we're gonna uh, do these activities. So this says cross out the incorrect word. Let's just choose the correct word. So she was a teacher, was is the correct word there. So let me get Stefania, do this first one for me. You were at the museum last week. Yeah, yeah, were is the right one there. Very good, very good. All right, let me get a Jay, do the next one for me. There were five people here yesterday. Five people here yesterday, very good. All right, Elmer, what about this one? The students were there one Monday morning. There Monday morning. Very good. Very good. All right, Maria Quintana, this one here. Uh, my mom was an artist in the 1990s. 1990s. Very good. All right, and Catherine, the next one. I was in college in 1989. Okay. And uh, Giovanna, can you do this one for us? Yeah, 
<laughs> Maybe Stefania can help her. Go ahead, Stefania. Sala and I, uh, Sal and I were at the theater last night. All right, very good, Stefania. Very good. All right, and Hayana, I'll do this last one for me. My daddy was a builder until 1995. Yeah, 1995. Yeah, it's also word. Then the another another word. How pronunciation the second word? Uh, my dad was. No, another one. Yes, yes. This one, builder. No, 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 no. Another one was and another one. Uh, let's see. So I see. My dad was a builder until 1995. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Okay. I think she was. She, she was about the were. Yeah. Wasn't were. Oh, how do you say were? Okay. Yeah, were. Okay. Yeah, were. Yeah, sorry about that. So okay. if if I said we, we could say we were builders until 1995. Uh, we can say we. Yeah. So oh yeah. So you can say we are too. Some people in English will say we are, but normally here you'll hear were. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll have some examples with more of these too. Oh yeah, so this one's good. It says, we're gonna read the email and answer the questions. So let's see, I'm gonna have somebody, I'm gonna have somebody very brave read this entire email. Who, who wants to read the entire email for us? All right, Stefania, I saw your hand first, go ahead. <laughs> How are you? I was in... Los Angeles on the weekend. It was at Manhattan Beach. Do you know it? It was very hot and there were lots of people there. There are many cafes there too. It was in a coffee called Ocean View and Malcolm was there. He was with a woman called Stacy. Is she's his girlfriend, Annie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that's good. So, let's look at this. So, I was in a cafe. We say called. Called. Not, yeah, I was in a cafe called Ocean View. All right, and yeah, so I saw some more hands too. So, let's look at the questions here. So, Catherine, she was at Manhattan Beach. Is that true or false? It's true. It's true. Okay. Very good. Very good. And then Jay, I remember I saw your hand up too. So number two, it says it was cold there. Is that true or false? False. 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 Yeah. It's not very cold there. Okay. Let's see. Let me get uh, Lyazette. Let's do number three. She was at a cafe called Sea View. Is that true or false? Mm, no, it's false because it's false. the Ocean View. Cold. Yeah, it's called Ocean View. That's right. That's right. All right, and Kasumi, what number four says her friend Malcolm was with another man. Is that true or false? False. Yeah, it's false. Yeah, because Malcolm was there with a woman called Stacy. Okay, so that's a good, different way to look at this. So let's we have another audio. So let's get ready. Uh, I give everybody about five seconds to prepare to listen to this, and then we'll answer these questions once they finish. So five, four, three two and one okay everyone here are the answers to our quiz about important dates in history the 24th of june 1497 was the day that giovanni caboto arrived in north america the 11th of november 1918 was the day that the First World War ended. The 9th of February, 1964, was the day that the Beatles appeared on TV in the US for the first time. About 73 million Americans watched them play. The 16th of July, 1969 was a very important day. Humans landed on the moon for the first time. 
the 10th of May, 1994, was a great day. Nelson Mandela was elected president of South Africa. So, how many questions did you get right? Add up your scores. All right, so this is, a, this is a, a fun one there. Now, one thing I want to point out is that number one, that's the war ending. I don't think that picture is very clear, <laughs> but that's when he was talking about World War One ending. That's what that's a picture of. So if the World War ended uh, is first picture number one, what year did they say that was? I right, go ahead, Catherine. 1918. 1918, okay. All right, and Jay, I saw your hand up, so we'll let you do number two. We talked about the Beatles. When were they popular? I missed it. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Let me get uh, Maria Quintana. Did you, did you get that one? Oh, I see you driving, Maria. Okay. What about uh, Lyazette? Did you get that one? Uh, did uh so 1964 i think yeah it was 1964 very good very good all right and then the next one they talked about landing on the moon so what what year was that stefania yeah uh, 1969 1969 very good okay and then number four was uh mandela what year was that kasumi go ahead and tell us 1994 1994. Very good. Very good. Okay. So let's look uh, some more ways to talk about the past tense. We're going to use was and were in the negative here. So as in the present simple, we use not to form negative statements in the past simple. So he was not a teacher in 2004, or he wasn't a teacher in 2004. When we put two words like this together, what was that called? Who remembers? Wasn't? Yeah, it is the, yeah, so that is the word. But when we combine two words like this, what is it called? Contraction, abbreviation. Yeah, no, a contraction. That's right. Yeah. So a contraction is when we can combine these two words together. So he was not and then wasn't is the contraction. So he was not a teacher in 2004. He wasn't a teacher in 2004. And so um, here's the word for they. So they were not at the park yesterday. And then they weren't at the park yesterday. Now, Hayana, you brought this up earlier. Sometimes you'll hear people say they weren't at the park yesterday. But most of the time in Birmingham, you'll hear people say they weren't at the park. So let's look at how to ask questions with these. So to ask questions about the past, we're going to swap the subject and the verb. So we, we see this sentence, he was in India. And then you can ask the question, was he in India? Here we have an example. They were late for school. And if you wanted to turn that into a question, we could just say, were they late for school? So that's pretty easy. So here are uh, more was and were negatives and questions. So let's do this. I wasn't, this says, I wasn't a good waiter. Here, let me get people to read these. Let me get uh, Stefania. Do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. What is waiter? Waiter. A waiter. Good question. Camarero. It's like a server. Um, mm, okay. Yeah. Thank <laughs> so, you. It's like and food and things like that. Okay. And, uh, wait, Stefania, read this for me. What does this say? Uh, were there any cakes at the party? Yeah, okay, good. So you got a good question there. All right, Catherine, read this one for me. There weren't any boats. Weren't any boats, okay. All right, Hayana, can you read this sentence for me? Was he good at the playing ten tennis? Tennis? Yeah. Tennis. That's it, tennis, you got it. Okay. Was he good at playing tennis? Yeah, that's right. So let's, here's, we're gonna do some more of these uh, examples. I think the best way to do is to repeat this. So this says cross out the incorrect word, but let's just say the correct word. So he wasn't a doctor. So let me get Kasumi, do this first one for me. 
They weren't very good at science. Yep, they weren't very good. Very good. Okay. All right, Giovanna, are you here with us? I wasn't here in Canada in uh, two Thursday two. Is that 2002? Close, close. Yeah, you're right. I wasn't in Canada in 2002. Very good. All right, uh, Maria Quintana, what about this one? You weren't at the party last night. Yeah, weren't is the right one there. Okay, Catherine, this one here. We wasn't in our house last year. We weren't. We yeah, weren't. that would be weren't. Yeah, we weren't in our house last year. Okay. All right, and let me get, uh, we'll get Jay, do this last one here. Uh, there weren't a restaurant near the river. Oh, so that was it. So that's actually going to be wasn't for there. So for there, oh, we sorry. say there was. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I have to apologize. We're all learning together, my friend. So there wasn't a restaurant near the river for that one. So this is a good one. So we are going to turn these sentences into questions. So here is an example. It says there were some factories. So the question would be, were there some, were there any factories? So let me see if Kasumi can start number one here. He was a good builder. Was he a good builder? Yeah. Was he a good builder? Okay. Yeah. And you can change your voice tone too. Very good. All right. Lizette, what about number two? Were they late this morning? Yeah, were they late this morning? Okay. All right, let's get Catherine. Give me number three here. Was she at a meeting yesterday? Okay, very good, very good. All right, Elmer, what about number four? You are, no, are you happy in college? Okay, but remember, we we just use this word, so we use are or we're. Are. Were. <laughs> I prefer were. Let's close the wall. As it, well, this one should be, were you happy? So, like, were you happy in college? That's kind of what they're asking there. Were you happy in college? Because if you say are, are is more of, like, the present tense. Like, so if I said, are you happy, that means, like, right now. But if I said, were you happy, that's something that's in the past. So let me get, let me get high on it. Do number five for me. Um, how to say this is the word again, please. <laughs> yeah, you say were, were. Were. Were in New Zealand for two weeks. New Zealand? Yeah, we, we, so this one we say, were we in New Zealand for two weeks? Yeah, we, yeah. let me see. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Wow, so hard for me. I yeah, need crack, yeah. like peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, so we're, and that's a kind of a strange thing to say. Were we in New Zealand for two weeks? Most people would know that, <laughs> but that's okay. okay. So let me, get, let me get here. Elmer, do this one for me. It says, you were in the swimming pool. Were you in the swimming pool? Yeah, were you in the swimming pool? Very good, very good. So we're just switching these two words around there. <laughs> All right, so let's listen to another audio and answer these questions. So this is the example first. You can see that this is a supermarket now. But in the 1950s, this was a train station. But now there are no trains. Okay, and so the answer to that one was B, because you can see now, uh, yeah, that's the picture that they were describing. So let's look for number one. So I'll play this, and then somebody can raise their hand and tell me which one is being described. This is a lovely building. It was a museum in the 1960s, but now it's a theater. Many people come here to see different shows. All right, so which one of these were they talking about? I see Stefania, I saw your hand first. The theater? The theater, I... yeah. 
Yeah, A, that's right. You're talking about the theater, okay? All right, so let's look at number two. The next building is very big. It was a factory in the 1940s. You can see that now it is a school. There are about 800 students here, so it is very noisy. All right, and Catherine, I saw your hand up. Which one of these is what, the one he's describing? It's a school. Mm -hmm. And which one of these is a school? Oh, I'm sorry, the letter A. <laughs> yeah, A is a school. Okay, very good, very good. Let's listen to number three now. This is a beautiful building. It's lots of large apartments now, but in the 1950s, it was a hospital. There is also a movie theater next to it, so it's a great place to live. All right, Jay, I saw your hand up. Which one of these are they talking about? It is for B. Yeah, B, that's right. Yeah, so they try to confuse you there because they said it used to be a hospital and it's next to a, a theater, but it's a B is what they were talking about there. So let's listen to this last one and try to identify the building. This is the last place on our tour. You can see it's a lovely garden now, but in the 1950s, it was an outdoor swimming pool. There is a new cafe over there next to the garden. So if you want a drink, go and get one. All right. So, and Jay, so Jay, I had you do the last one. So let's see if I could get, what about uh, Hayana? Which one of these was that describing? First, um, he described the garden. And after um, swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So he was talking about the garden, how it used to yeah, be. Um, the first, yeah, the first yeah. talking about B and the second uh, swimming pool, outdoor. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, but the, the first one was B. So it's very good, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, Catherine, do you have a question? It just, at the end, it say now it's a cafeteria, a coffee shop. So it, it will be letter C. Oh, he said, he said, now it's a copy. Let's listen. I mean, I missed that. He'll listen to it one more time. This is the last place on our tour. You can see it's a lovely garden now. But in the 1950s, it was an outdoor swimming pool. There is a new cafe over there next to the garden. So if you want a drink, go and get one. Oh, my body. Yeah, it's next, to the it's next to the garden, right? It's confusing when they throw things like that at you, though. And also, I missed the, the number two. I say letter A, but I think it's actually letter C because of the boss of the school, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I saw that, but I think this is actually like a bus stop. So I think you were right. I think it was A because normally when you see the bell, that means school. It looks more like a church, though, but. I guess he's literally. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I guess it could be a school. We'll we'll just see that one's up. up. <laughs> we'll say it could be A or C. But I, I'm glad you're identifying those things. Well, let, let's see. So you know, we're kind of run like well. So actually, yeah. So it is 3:45 right now. Um, I'm going to continue this until the end. But if you do need to leave, uh, you're more than welcome to. We're almost done though. So this is. Um, you know, just another word structure of how to say these things. I was a student last year. They were students in 2008. Um, these are just a good way to, to look at this and build these sentences. So we talked about the past simple of to be. We talked about jobs, town, and life events. And then we talked about past states. So let's kind of quickly go through this last one. We're talking about past events. So regular verbs in the past simple, the past simple describes events that happened in the past. The past simple forms of regular verbs, they end in ed, and then the negatives use did not, plus the base form. So I visited Luke last Friday. He didn't play tennis last night. 
So as we use more of these, here's the structure more. So I played tennis, you played tennis, he played tennis, she didn't play tennis, we didn't play tennis, they didn't play tennis. There's different ways to build these negatives. And then normally with just the regular, you would just use that ED right there. Let's get to the examples here. So good examples here. Um, we'll, get the, we'll get people to read these real quick. Uh, Lizette, can you read this one for me? He walked on the office. He walked on the office or to the office? Oh, I'm sorry. He walked to the office. <laughs> to the office, yeah. To the office. A lot of um, people who aren't native English speakers, sometimes they struggle to, to pronounce that. So he walked to the office. You got it, Lazza. You said it right. So, Catherine, what about this one? Did they, did they work late? Yeah, did they work late? Okay. All right, and uh, uh, Stefania, read this one for me. She didn't walk downtown. Yep, she, she didn't, didn't walk downtown. Yeah. All right. Downtown. <laughs> yeah, downtown, that's right. That's kind of like the uh, like the downtown area of a city where all the buildings are. Okay. Let's see, um, Elmer, what about this one? Maybe hi, Anna can help. Me. Oh, Elmer, there you go. We did not watch TV today. Yeah, that's good. I don't like watching TV. Yeah, we didn't watch TV today. Okay, yeah. Sometimes it is kind of boring sometimes. So, very good. So, here are um, some more activities. Now, uh, we I'm, since I'm kind of running over, we won't do these, but um, you're welcome to look at these and practice these later. Um, you were at the museum there were five people the students were there on monday morning my mom was an artist i was in college sal and i were at the theater last night and then my dad was a builder until 1995. so this is this is an activity where you're going to fill in the gaps you know what let's just kind of go through this uh because i want to finish today um you're welcome to watch the recording later and do these on your own though so here are some more spelling rules for the past simple. So the past simple of all regular verbs ends in ed, but for some verbs, there are some spelling changes. So wash is going to be washed. Stop is going to be stopped. So we're going to double the constant and add ed. Dance is going to be danced. Try is going to be tried. We remove the Y and add IED instead. So these are just a little some spelling rules for how to do these past. And so I should have said this first. So most regular ones, remember we add ED. For the this one, we're gonna double the last consonant and add ED, so add a PED. This one, since it ends in E, we just add D. And this one, we're gonna remove the Y and add IED instead. So here are some good examples of this. It says, he carried the bags for her. We arrived here at midnight. I studied English last year, and they saved money for a vacation. And then here is one where we would just, oh, I wish we could do this. We we're running out of time. You can do this on your own, though. And then here's an audio that we will have to skip that one. And then I really want to talk about this when here. So this is what we call a clause. So to say when in someone's life or when something happened, you can use in with the year or when with the person's age. So let's look at this. He moved to England in 1990. And then when we would use when, he moved to England when he was 10 years old. So this describes when in the past that something happened. So this is kind of a, how to do this. So I started school, and then the example is four years ago. I started school when I was four years old. Well, let's, let's do these real quick. <laughs> I want to make sure everyone understands this. So we're going to use when to link this together. So the example, I started school when I was four years old. So let me get uh, Lyazette. Can you do number one for me? She moved to the U.S. when she was 19 years old. 
Not very good, very good. Kasumi, what about number two? They started swimming when they were 25 years old. Okay, very good. All right, Stefania, what about number three? We visit Jap Japan. I don't know how to say in Japan. <laughs> visited Japan, okay. Okay. Uh, we were uh, 27 years old. Yeah, that's right. We visited Japan when we were 27 years old, okay. And we get Catherine to this last one for me. I received this gift when I was 31 years old. Okay, yeah. So I think we got a good a good feel for that one. We'll have to skip this audio, but this one we you know we talked about some regular verbs in the past, past times and live events, and then we talked about your past. So I apologize to everybody that we ran a little bit over today. But I want to ask, does anybody have any questions about what we talked about? Feeling pretty good? Okay. Well, I know we're going to, well, we're about seven minutes over. Well, if we don't have any questions, guys, I wonder if I could ask everybody to show themselves on camera, big smiles on your faces while we're learning about uh, the past tense verbs here. And then I will take a picture of all of us. I'll give us a five second countdown. So five, four, three, two, and one. We can do a quick wave at the camera, guys. So I want to thank everybody uh, for coming today. Um, I know we had a lot to cover. We had a lot to listen to. But um, I will post the recording for everybody later tonight. And, you know, if you do have any questions about what we talked about, you're always welcome to reach out to me and let me know. And if there are no questions, I hope you all have a, an amazing Valentine's Day. And then I will see you on Friday. All right, bye, guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm.